Hello and welcome to our tutorial prep tutorial. In this video, we'll be going over the few things that you need to do in order to prepare for one of my tutorials. What we'll be doing is just confirming some settings, and then we'll be going over the game manager script, options manager, and audio manager that I include in all of my games and tutorials. To get started, you want to go into Unity, select New Project, Typically, my projects are 2D, but usually it doesn't super matter which one of these you choose, but typically all my projects are 2D, so I might want to go with that one to start. Now, what I'm using right now is this editor version, but I'm sure it will change for future projects, so just use whatever you prefer. It's not super important because most of what I'm providing are frameworks and don't really mess with a lot of the internal workings of Unity that get changed through various updates. Name the project whatever you wish or whatever you want to name your project. For this, I'm just going to do tutorial, tutorial. Going to select create project and the Unity will begin building the project. This can take some time depending upon your computer. Now that the project is built, there's a few things that we need to check and change depending upon your current configuration. To this, we're going to start going into Edit, Preferences, External Tools, and then you'll want to select a script editor that you prefer. Now, I prefer to use Visual Studio Code, because it's the one that I use most often. So I'm just going to leave that how it is, but you can select whichever code editor you prefer. Most of my tutorials will be done using Visual Studio Code because it works very well with C Sharp and Unity. There's also an extension you can download for Visual Studio Code that makes coding in C Sharp very easy and intuitive. Next, we'll go into Gizmos and we'll turn off the TextMesh Pro icons. I like to have these turned off because they really get in the way pretty often when you're using TextBest Pro objects, because depending upon the size of the UI and the size of the objects, that a little icon can cover up the entire scene when on the scene panel. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a few folders. So right click on assets, create folder. We'll name this first one scripts. Create folder resources. Create folder sprites. Create folder. And this last one will be named editor. These are the main folders I use for most, if not all, my projects. Next, we're going to create our game manager script, which I use in nearly every single project that I do. So we'll go into the scripts folder. We will right click, create. C Sharp script, and we'll name this Game Manager. After that finishes compiling, we're going to right click, create folder, and we're going to name this folder Managers. We're going to go into the folder, right click, create C Sharp script, we'll name this Audio Manager. Right click, create C Sharp script. We'll name this one Options Manager. Let's go back to our scripts folder. We're going to double click Game Manager to open it up. Now to start out, your script should look something like this. To start, I'm going to delete everything that is inside of the brackets. And I'm going to create a singleton sequence. There's a few different ways to do this, but this is the way that I prefer. Start out with public, static, game manager, ins instance, open bracket, get, semicolon, private set, semicolon, close bracket. So what this is, is that this is a dec declaration of a variable named instance. It has the Game Manager class on that instance. It is a static, meaning that there can only be one version of it. 
and it is public, meaning that it can be referenceable by other scripts. Now we set get to public, but we also modified it to where private is, or to where setting that variable is private. That means that the only thing that can set that variable is this game manager class. Next, we're going to add public audio manager, audio manager, get private set. So similar here, but we don't need to worry about static for now. It's very similar to the game manager instance, except for it is an audio manager variable. We don't need to set it to static. We'll do the exact same thing for the options manager. Get private set. Now, typically, the declared variables that I have start with a lowercase letter. But because these are meant to only have one version of them, I have them with a capitalized beginning letter. It kind of helps you identify important variables from others. Next, we'll set up our singleton sequence. Private. Void. Awake. And we'll start with if instance equals null, meaning instance is not set, oh. meaning that the instance variable is blank, then instance equals this. So we will set it to itself. Then we'll set this object to don't destroy on load. Game, game object. So we're just referencing ourself. Apologies, meant to be lowercase. So we're referencing ourself. Then we're going to log debug.log we'll do dollar sign meaning that we can pass in some variables to this string quotations setting game manager instance to and then open bracket this close bracket and then semicolon at the end and then finally, we're going to call another method that we're about to script in just a moment. Initialize managers. And then we need to handle if instance is not null. So else if instance does not equal this. So if instance is not its own self, then we want to destroy ourselves. The reason why this is so important is because it makes sure that if there are duplicate game managers in the scene, it will destroy itself. Let's take a look at how that looks. But first I'm gonna do forward slash forward slash right here. I'm going to save the script and I'm going to return to our game. In our hierarchy on the side, we're going to right click, create empty. We're going to name this game manager. We will add a component and we will add the game manager script. Next we'll hit play and to confirm it's working, it should say don't destroy unload, and on, underneath the drop down, you should see Game Manager. You should also be able to move over to the console and see a log that says Setting Game Manager Instance to Game Manager. Now we want to ensure that only one version of this exists. So I'm going to stop playing, I'm going to right click on the Game Manager, I'm going to select Duplicate, and then whenever I hit Play, one of them should delete themselves, and there should be only be one left. 
and you see one of them deleted themselves and there's only one game manager instance and you set and down here you can see the log that says setting game manager instance to game manager we can stop playing go in here and delete that extra game manager save our scene so i hit Control s to save our scene and go back over the project and open back up our game manager script Next, we need to craft this initialize managers method. So after the awake method, we'll put private void initialize managers and so we'll start with sorry, audio manager that remember that's the variable that we cleared up here equals get component in children audio manager and then parentheses semicolon now we want the exact same thing for our options manager so what this is doing it's going to look for the children inside of the game manager to show you what that looks like let's hop back over to here right click on game manager Select create empty and create empty. So we've got two empties underneath here. We'll rename the first one audio manager, and then we will attach the audio manager script. Repeat for the options manager. So let's return to our game manager script. Let's remove the comments from there and then save. Let's return to our game, allow it to load, and then we'll hit play. We can select our game manager and see that it has our audio managers underneath the game manager. Let's stop playing and return to our game manager script. Now we need to ensure that if the game man if these managers are not there underneath the game manager, that we can create them. Because they need to always be there in every single scene that this game manager is in. To do that, we'll do if audio manager is null, meaning it could not find it inside the children. We'll do game object prefab equals resources dot load game object and we're going to look in the folder prefabs managers audio manager. Next, we need to make sure that we actually found the prefab that we're looking for. So we'll do if prefab equals null, then what we want to do is we want to put a log debug.log audio manager prefab not found. That could be lowercase. Semicolon. However, if it is not null, we'll do else instantiate. So we're going to create a copy of that prefab. Prefab transform. Oops, sorry. Transform dot position. So it's going to be basically where it starts. Its rotation is going to be zero, which is quaternion dot identity. That equals zero, zero, zero on its rotation. And then the parent is going to be the object that has this script on it. To do that, we just put in transform. 
Finally, we need to make sure we set our audio manager to the object that we just pr created. So audio manager. We actually, we want to set the audio manager to the object that we just created. So we'll do, we'll copy this that we already have up here, right into here. So we can save that script and let's return to our game. Let's go into our resources folder. So if you recall from the script, we're loading from our resources folder. We're looking for a folder named prefabs slash managers with an object named audio manager. So we first need to create a folder. We'll name it prefabs. Inside that prefab, we'll make another folder named managers. And inside of that folder, we'll drag our audio manager. And since we're already here, we'll go and drag our options manager as well. Now we can save the scene and watch what happens whenever I delete this audio manager from the hierarchy. Whenever I hit play, it creates a clone of our audio manager. Let's go ahead and drag our audio manager back underneath our game manager. And I'm going to return to our game manager script. I'm going to copy this entire method or this entire check there. I'm going to paste it. And then I'm just going to replace audio manager with options manager everywhere it shows up. So we can save that and that's it. So this is all the prep that you need to do to prepare for one of my tutorial series. Before you begin any of my tutorials, I will be expecting that this has been completed before you start the tutorial, so you understand where I'm referencing the game manager script from. Okay, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.